it's John Guinan with Interventional Radiology again, and here to talk through some cases of uh, percutaneous cholecystostomy tube placement. So, as I'm sure you all are aware, the gold standard treatment for acute cholecystitis is a surgical cholecystectomy. Um, now, unfortunately, not everyone is a good surgical candidate, um, and so Sometimes they need a temporizing agent um, to, so they can get clinically better before they have their gallbladder removed. Or maybe for whatever clinical reasons, maybe they'll never be a great surgical candidate and so a percutaneous cholecystostomy tube may be the definitive treatment. Either way, um, before patients get to me, they typically have some imaging to diagnose their acute cholecystitis. Um, usually we ask for a red upper quadrant sonogram, which is our gold standard imaging for cholecystitis. Um, in this case, they got a red upper quadrant uh, sonogram, you know, looking at liver and um, gallbladder. In this case, the gallbladder is mildly distended. Um, the gallbladder wall is slightly thickened. Um, as you can see, there's lots of this echogenic material, probably representing small stones and sludge. We have some gallbladder wall thickening. There's a trace amount of free fluid around the gallbladder. And the sonographer reported that the Murphy sign was positive. So remember, Murphy sign is very specific. It's um, supposed to be done while the patient is taking a breath in, the right upper quadrant is pressed on or palpated, and it's not only that it hurts, but it causes cessation of ins inhalation. So whenever I'm checking, I tell people to take a breath in, then I press on the right upper quadrant. If they go, they stop breathing, that's a positive Murphy sign. It's not just that they have pain, although some people um, kind of get that confused. In this case, they kind of have everything that we need to diagnose acute, cholecyst um, acute cholecystitis. They have stones or sludge, echogenic debris, mild gallbladder wall thickening, um, some free fluid, and then uh, the positive Murphy sign. So that's kind of a slam dunk. And then we always work with our, our surgery colleagues very closely. They're kind of the experts on who needs to have treatment. Um, so typically, if they come to me and ask me to perform a cholecystostomy tube and they think it needs to be done emergently, we try to fit it on as long as their coagulation parameters are all safe and everything else is good to go. Uh, so here's our diagnostic images, and let's see if I can find our therapeutic images. For some reason, with uh, right now in our Horos, the ultrasound pictures aren't coming across very good, which is unfortunate because you know I use ultrasound to get guidance into the gallbladder and there's two options you can either go directly into the gallbladder or you can go across the liver in a transhepatic percutaneous approach um, most people will actually do the transhepatic approach and that sounds counterintuitive initially because wouldn't you expect there to be an increased risk of bleeding and there is slightly but um, we have found over years that Tubes placed transhepatically stay in position better because you know it's going through uh, more robust tissue, so it doesn't get pulled out as easily. And then also, if there is any leaking from of bile uh, from around the tube, it goes kind of in and along that hepatic tract um, where it can be kind of resorbed and not just spilling into the abdomen. So the risk of of bile leak is also less with this. So. Um, most people will do a transhepatic approach, and we do that under ultrasound, and then we do the rest of the procedure through uh, with fluoroscopic guidance. So this is my initial, um, this is where I looked with ultrasound and thought I had a good window, and then I'll double check with uh, fluoroscopy to make sure that I'm not too high and that I'm potentially going through the edge of the pleura. This looks safe. And then we do the ultrasound guidance and get a wire in, which apparently we didn't get a picture of, but we'll have a wire in to the gallbladder and then place the tube over the wire. Most of the times in the acute setting, we won't inject any contrast. In this case, I think I aspirated as much bile as I could and then injected a little bit of contrast 
to prove that I'm in the gallbladder. And you can see these little foam defects correspond to the stones that we saw in the sludge. And then there is a little bit of enhancement within the, the common duct, and then it stops. So there's a common duct occlusion, which is usually the nidus for what causes the acute cholecystitis and multiple filling defects, and then the tube is correctly positioned. Um, and I think that's it.